Okay, I'm going to discuss about my childhood because it may differ from a lot of you guys. Um, when I was three weeks old, I moved from Glasgow, Scotland, where I was born, um, to the Outer Hebrides, which is islands off the coast of Scotland. Um, I was in Ireland for some of my childhood after Bloody Sunday. If you don't know what Bloody Sunday is, have a look um, online, um, Wikipedia. Um, I remember watching the riots at the top of my road, um, petrol bombs, etc. I was also in Hong Kong when, uh, sorry, I went to Germany after that, then to Hong Kong, um, went to Germany again, and I was in Germany during the time of the Berlin Wall coming down. Um... I've been all over the place and one of the things I can say is I connect with local people quite well here in Spain a lot of people know me and it's because I try to break barriers down in the UK I was working at a building called Millennium Point which was quite a, a important building in Birmingham where I interconnected with the security guys, the cleaners, and pretty much everybody else. They all come from different groups, funny enough, because they separate. The security guys are predominantly Pakistani. Maintenance guys are white British. The cleaners are Jamaican. Students are Chinese. And lecturers are predominantly white British. They don't interlink. There's this false boundary that people have where people believe that somebody hates them or dislikes them or they're talking about them. Whatever it is, they, this wall goes up. And I break those warriors down, walls down. Um, when I go to school in Spain, taking my son and my daughter to school, people shake my hand. Now... These people are from Bulgaria, Ukraine, other countries. But the fact is, they connect with me because we're one thing. We're all expats. And that's that's what separates some of these situations, is because I remove that boundary. Now, I'll be honest with you, the U.S. gets a bit of a kicking in the Philippines because you have too many people with... Um, mental issues going to the Philippines, which is why a lot of people have issues with them. Now, before anybody says, oh, Matt's anti-American, I'm not anti-American. Uh, Eric, well, let's, Eric, Bob Ward, I've probably got about two to 400 people I could name in the Philippines that are Americans. And... I don't have issues with them. Eric, I did because of running around naked in the desert, but that's another story. But that's not related to being American. Um, the fact that I gave him work, Philip Patrick, for example, I took him out to the Middle East as well. These are very, very close friends to me. Um, I can't really talk about their lives too much, but, but you know when life is quite hard... I've got a habit of picking people up. It's just... I think I understand it. That's that's the whole concept here. My whole childhood is military orientated. From birth. From birth, where my father's military retired after 22 years, which is why we ended up in the UK. Um, when I got to the UK, I couldn't understand the way people think in the UK. I come from a society and environment where we look after each other. The first experience I had was a friend of mine, he charged his brother £20 for fixing his brother's computer. In the environment I come from, my father's car needed an MOT, which is your, I don't know what you call it in the US, but it's just, it's a certificate you have to have to say it's roadworthy. And the mechanic worked through the night for about a day and a half, nonstop, just like fixing. The, there was various problems. <laughs> he worked all the way through getting it working. What was his payment? 
he wouldn't take one because that is the different scenarios. You know what I was saying about the mastermind group? We're sharing business ideas, etc. That's me. If your business is successful and you don't give me nothing, I really don't care. You know, that's probably why I'm sat in a two-bedroom place <laughs> instead of a mansion. But I don't care. You know, thing for me is happiness. If you're happy, I'm happy. That's it. Now, what did we leave when we left, though? We did leave eight crates of beer in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the mechanic, by the way, is a military mechanic. He's not a roadside mechanic. But that is my level of friendship. That's why very few people sit as my friends. There is acquaintances and there's friends. If you get on my friend's table, that is quite a... I wouldn't say an honor, because it depends how you see it. But if you're in trouble, I'll look after you. It's as simple as that. If you're amongst my friends... I do. I go a lot further than most other people do because I come from a military background. That's what we do. We take care of each other. Um, and that's what I found very funny in the civilian society. People stab each other in the back. like Not like that. It's more like <laughs> double-handed. <laughs> well, maybe like this. Um, they do not look after each other in the same way. They really don't, and I, I was just really, really shocked because I'm used to, um, I took a beating as a child from one of my friends was getting beaten up with this guy, so he's about half my size. You know, I was a big kid anyway, but um, basically, I he was getting beaten up with these two kids, so I took the two kids on. And when I say the two kids, they were at my. Th they're both about 14, 15, and I was about 13 at the time. So I took the two of them on and gave them a beating. Then their mother came out and slapped me. <laughs> so I'm just like, oh, you know, I'm not fighting the mother, but I'm just like out the way, you know, I'm, I'm trying to like get out of this. And then their muscle-bound dad come out and gave me a beating. So I ended up with like, three to four people fighting me where I was actually trying to help a friend out. Now, my friend, during this time, it disappeared and went and got my father. And it's quite funny because my father is quite a laid-back guy unless you push him. Now, bear in mind, this the guy that I'm getting punched off, he, he you know, he's muscle-bound. He you know, although he's hitting me, he's not really hitting me because he's... He can't really swing his arms, but I'm still a child at the time. But my father come and sorted the guy out. And long story short, the police were called, etc., and the matter was resolved. Now, that is me. I will intervene in things I shouldn't do, which is why my wife retracts me a fair bit. Because she knows I'll get myself in situations that could be quite dangerous. But my father's the same. That's that's our upbringing. It's not like normal civil life. And that's our background. We're predominantly a group. do not matter where you are, who you are, nationality, race, or whatever. If you're in the group, you're in the group. When we're out in a man... <coughs> sorry, I've got a dry throat. When we're out in a man... I've got guys from U.S., Canada, India, um, Pakistan, and also the local Amani guys. So I've got Arabic as well. We all eat together. That is not normal. But for me, that's how I sit. If you're part of my team, you're part of the team. We do not separate because of race, color, or anything else. You function as a team. And I remember... <laughs> I remember... If, um, Philip was working with, um, oh, what's his name now? He's working with one of the, the guys from India, and I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but Philip had this, you know, he didn't want to work with the guy, but I separated everybody off, so they're working with somebody they wouldn't normally work from with because they're from a different culture. And 
It was quite funny because after working in the desert for four and a half months, those guys still keep in touch on emails and Facebook and stuff because they had this barrier that comes from culture where people learn to be racist. They're, the barrier is based on the media. It's based on hearing people go, you know, I, I won't say these racist things, but they're, they're racist because that's what they're taught at a young age. I didn't have that. My father is quite funny because we're, we're here in Spain. We'll, I'll say to my wife, oh, we'll go to the Chinese shop or we'll go... My, my father would go, oh, you can't say that. <laughs> but the funny thing is, it's called... The, the Chinese shops are called Chinese things here. They're like um, uh, Grand Chino. Grand, Grand Chino means like big Chinese. You know? <laughs> that's what, I mean, it's like a Chinese restaurant called the Big big House. They, that, that's what they, they're called. Chino is Chinese. And so we'll go, oh, we'll go for a Chinese or something. Man, you can't say things like that, you know. But at the same time, he is talking from his own scenario you know when we were in Hong Kong we were alongside the Gurkhas Gurkhas are excellent soldiers um, it's a pity the UK doesn't recognise it this is what separates me from most people um, because I come from an environment where I've lived in many people's shoes I've lived in many people's backgrounds I've sat with people from different cultures and they accept me as a brother and that's how I treat them. So this is why I have no hang-ups on race, color, creed or whatever because in Oman, the uh, Arabic guys there invite me to sit and eat with them. You know, they share their dinner with me. It's like, it's very honorary to be even allowed to sit at the table sometimes. Um, same with my guys from India. Exactly the same. They invite me to eat with them. We sit as a group. We sit as a one person, one kind. And that's why I get a bit frustrated by this anti-Muslim thing and everything else. Because people really do not understand any of these cultures. But are believing the stuff the media sell us. When the media is selling arms more than anything else. Um, which really frustrates me because if, if people really understood each other, there'd be a lot less wars. All right, thanks for watching. Yeah.